Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. Finger springs are composed of a spring arm section that contacts the tooth, a helix that provides the spring action, and an extension into the acrylic. Finger springs are constructed from 0.016 to 0.025 diameter stainless steel wire for anterior teeth and of 0.025 to 0.036 diameter wire for posterior teeth. A pencil outline is the important first step in the construction of any finger spring. Proper spring design is a large factor in producing the desired tooth movement with a removable appliance. The first step in spring bending is to make a helix near the end of the wire that you're going to form into the spring. The wire is bent around the round beak of the pliers. and tried back on the pencil outline. A small loop for retention in acrylic is bent into the palatal extension of the spring. With a series of small bends, the wire is adapted to contact the palatal tissues and to extend upward to its point of contact with the mesial surface of, in this case, the first permanent molar tooth to be moved to the distal. It's necessary to make a pencil mark on the wire frequently to indicate the spot where the next bend should be made. The wire should fully contact the mesial surface of the molar tooth. You continue to adapt the wire to extend around to the buckle of the tooth with a series of small bends. You have to try the wire on the model number of times in order to adapt it properly. On the buckle aspect, a small loop is bent into the wire to protect the cheek tissues. The loop is bent so that it's parallel to the buckle surface of the molar tooth. The excess wire is removed. The loop is closed completely. And you try the finger spring back on the model. The completed finger spring should have the proper spring design to produce the most effective tooth movement. The helix should unwind in activation. The acrylic extension of the spring should be occlusal to the loop of the helix, and the spring arm should be to the gingival. The spring arm should adapt very closely to the gingival margin of the tooth as it extends in its contact through the proximal aspect around to the buckle. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. 
please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu slash license.